Ahoy hoy, I'm Planet Walk and Russell Brand is someone who I've been meaning to make a video on for a while, due to how off the rails he has gone. Luckily I wear this magical amulet from Airstech that keeps me safe from all of the various signals out there. Yes, that is Russell Brand promoting an anti-EMF amulet that really does nothing. But today's video isn't about that pseudoscience that he's pushing, oh no, it's about this pseudoscience that he's pushing. Vaccines might contribute to autism. Now you might be thinking, Planner Walk, that's not pseudoscience because he said that vaccines might contribute to autism, not that they do. The only problem with that is that there are plenty of studies out there which pretty conclusively show that vaccines do not contribute to autism. Saying that vaccines might contribute to autism is essentially no different to saying that the earth might be flat. Both statements are statements born out of ignorance of the facts. The CDC are actually going to do something that they could do, should do, no point in having them if they don't do. They're going to study whether or not there's a link between vaccines and autism. Well, it's kind of pointless when those studies have already been done. The biggest study, the Danish study of over half a million children, showed that there was zero link whatsoever between vaccines and autism. Let me tell you just one way that science is corrupt. There's the 1990s, there's a craze for organic food. The big agriculture industry is in trouble because they know that pesticides are likely detrimental to health in a number of ways. Well, why don't we do a study that shows that organic food and pesticide enhanced food are no different from one another? Okay, there's a big problem with what Russell Brand is talking about here. He's talking about organic food as if it's pesticide free. It isn't. So organic foods can still use pesticides, it's just that those pesticides won't be derived from synthetic substances. So claiming that the difference between organic food and non-organic food is pesticides is wrong because organic foods can still use pesticides, just sometimes they might use less pesticides. And when it comes down to whether pesticides are actually that dangerous or not, it's really just how much you consume although some pesticides may be a little bit more dangerous than others. In fact, some pesticides that are used for organic foods can actually be more dangerous than pesticides that are used for non-organic foods. So it really is a lot more complicated than, oh, organic food is good because it doesn't use pesticides, because sometimes it does use pesticides. Now maybe it uses less pesticides, but sometimes those pesticides are more dangerous than their non-organic counterparts. In fact, if you want to see a really good video on the differences between organic food and non-organic food, then I'd recommend the video by Kirksgesart. So what do they do? They get Stanford University to conduct a study where they compare organic fruit to pesticide fruit. And what do they study? Vitamins. Do they have the same amount of vitamins? Well, yeah. The pesticides don't affect the nutritional value when it comes to vitamins. Well, here's the thing. Whether our food is organic or not doesn't just come down to which sort of pesticides it uses. It comes down to the fertilizer it uses or whether the food has been genetically modified. It is perfectly reasonable to ask, hey, which kind of impact on the vitamins might these factors have? So they conduct that study and then a compliant media eagerly reports pesticide fruit and organic fruit no different. Well, here's the thing. A lot of people are concerned about the nutritional content. So yes, it makes sense to report on that. Who's going to fund surveys and science that's detrimental to the agenda of the establishment. Let me know in the comments and chat who's going to do that. Well, given that there are a lot of alternatives that actually tend to rake in a decent amount of money, it would make sense for them to conduct studies to show that their product might actually be better. But unfortunately, a lot of these alternatives just rely on the association that people have of organic or natural being better than synthetic. The reality is, is that marketing is often a lot more powerful than the facts of the matter, so why do a study if they don't really matter as much as the marketing? Wherever you're watching this, YouTube, X, or wherever, let me know what you think. I mean, in a way, that's what I'm doing, but I doubt Russell Brand is going to see this video, and if by some miracle he does, I doubt that he will absorb much of the information in it. This content was originally done on Rumble Premium, where we do our best work first. Oh dear, if this is his best work, then I hate to see what his worst work is. And as you know, airports are places for Wi-Fi and all sorts of evil energies. Think of all the phones out there. Oh yeah. 
that is actually a good point. That might actually be his worst work. If the CDC suddenly determine that under RFK, who's ultimately the head of the HHS, that they will look into links between vaccines and autism, what are we going to discover? I'm not actually sure of the answer to that because I'm not convinced that everybody involved is acting in good faith, especially not RFK Jr. There are details about this that I am going to go into that give me pause and make me think, we might not actually be getting a fair and balanced study. What have you learned from the various COVID inquiries? Do you feel more inclined to trust the pharmaceutical industry and the government and government regulatory agencies? Or do you trust them less than ever? The only problem is that with that logic, that sets us up to be dismissed if the results come back with something that they disagree with. If they disagree with the results, then they'll say, oh, they're corrupt. But if they don't disagree with the results, they'll say, oh, look, we were right all along. So all this does is just serve to embolden conspiracy theorists. The CDC will study the potential link between vaccines and autism, sources have revealed. Two sources told Reuters the agency is planning a large study into the long disproven, long disproven. <laughs> no, they're still old school media, aren't they? Because that's why you put in the line, long disproven. Well, it would be irresponsible not to include that line because that line is correct and adds more content to the situation. If you publish a news article on someone disputing established science and don't offer any kind of pushback at all, you are giving their position some form of credibility. Unfortunately though, a lot of news outlets don't actually do that enough or to a standard that I'd deem satisfactory. Well of course we all know that Bobby Kennedy is cynical and skeptical about many pharmaceutical products and the pharmaceutical industry as a whole. And during the pandemic, he became one of the key voices advocating for natural and holistic health. You know what's really funny about saying that he was advocating for natural natural and holistic health, he advocated for hydroxychloroquine. You know, something that is man-made. I doubt that would fall under Russell Brand's definition of natural. Not to mention, it is weird to be skeptical of pharmaceutical products, except for the ones that conspiracy theorists happen to be raving about despite the lack of evidence for their claims. Get some exercise. Eat well. Stop smoking, Isaac. These ideas are all prominent, progressive and important ideas. Yes, those are important things, but not everyone has the time, energy, willingness or know how to focus on those things, and they shouldn't be considered a replacement for actual medicine. Not all problems can be fixed by going for a run, and sometimes going for a run will be made harder by certain problems people might have. But along with scientific study into areas where people have doubts, the perfect example being, is there a link between autism and vaccines? Why has autism suddenly shot up? Well, that's because in the past, a lot of people with autism just didn't get diagnosed. With more knowledge about autism and better diagnostic criteria, we are finding out that more people than previously thought actually have autism. And also, with more people actually knowing what autism is, it's more likely that people will be tested for autism, thus resulting in a higher number of cases. You could just as easily make the claim that, ah, oh, more people are gay these days than ever, so therefore vaccines are turning people gay. You could say that, but that would ignore all the factors that we know about. Let me know in the comments and chat if you noticed when you had your scheduled jabs that your baby suddenly was not very well or went a funny colour or whatever. Well, going off what people notice is a really bad metric because sometimes people will notice something and then attribute it to something that just happened even though they might have nothing to do with each other. To give an example, there was one time when someone made a pizza for me, and the next day I ended up in hospital. Now, the initial assumption that was made is that, oh, maybe the pizza caused me to end up in hospital. That was probably not the case. But because it was something that had happened very recently, that was the initial assumption. Or if during the pandemic you got one of the shots of like, oh, I'm dizzy the whole time now, or I had a heart attack six months later. I'm sorry, but six months later? The chance that somebody watching this video will get a heart attack in the next six months is actually pretty high. That does not mean that my video is causing heart attacks. That heart attack six months later can be from any number of things. To point to one thing that you think might be the cause and say that that definitely caused it without actually, you know, doing some kind of study is completely fallacious. Surely the only way to put to bed all of these doubts and conspiracies is conducting studies. Unfortunately, that's not the case because a lot of people that are 
conspiracy-minded will just not read the studies and continue to believe what they want to believe. We see this with Flat Earthers all the time. Sure, some Flat Earthers will change their mind, but there are a lot of Flat Earthers who, regardless of how much evidence you present, regardless of how many experiments you conduct, they will continue to believe what they want to. Now, I'm not saying that experiments and studies are useless or should never be done. In fact, they are very useful for preventing people from falling into these conspiracy theories. But for the people who already believe conspiracy theories, it's going to be very hard to convince them just by using evidence. After all, for a lot of what conspiracy theorists believe, the evidence against them already exists and it hasn't convinced them. Even in that short article, you can see that the Daily Mail is framing, long disproven, long disproven. They're trying to separate you mentally from the truth with that little piece of language. Well, quite the opposite, actually. They are trying to state the facts of the matter. Just because you do not agree with the facts doesn't mean that they're wrong. Let's have a look at how the media is already discrediting that investigation. Well, they wouldn't be wrong to discredit the investigation. There are a few problems with it. This is despite hundreds of worldwide clinical trials and studies proving there is no link. Why would you bother doing any science? Is there a link between eating hot, hot powder and drinking off milk and then diarrhea several days later. Why would you conduct a study about anything? Is there a link between your mouth and my butt? So is it just me or is Russell Brand just insufferable? I was cringing through that. But anyway, the point to me doesn't seem to be why would you do any studies ever? Barely anyone would say that. But the point is more, why would you study something that has been studied plenty of times? This is something that has been studied many times. You've got the Denmark study, of course, which is the biggest study out there, which found no link. There's also a study from 1999 from the UK, which also found no link. And this was one year after Wakefield published his fraudulent study. Hell, there's even a 2013 study which looked for a link between vaccine antibodies and found none, done by the CDC. And... One second... Huh. The CDC has looked into this before. However, none of this matters to people that are anti-vax because they don't care about studies that go against their narrative. They want studies that confirm what they already believe. This is why the studies that anti-vaxxers throw at you will be something along the lines of, oh, we found higher levels of mercury in the bodies of people with autism. Never mind the fact that it also shows that they found lower levels of mercury exiting the body in those same people. Including at least two previous CDC investigations. Oh. I hadn't seen that part yet. Oh well, I wonder how Russell Brand will respond to that. The news comes amid one of the largest measles outbreaks the United States has seen in years. Remember that measles outbreak? Remember the measles outbreak? That's because of Bobby Kennedy. Hey Bobby Kennedy, thanks a lot for being cynical about vaccines. Now people are getting measles and dying. So, you know, maybe everyone should just do what the pharmaceutical industry wants, huh? Shouldn't they, maybe? Or maybe, and this might be a wild idea for Russell Brand, but maybe people should vaccinate their kids so they don't die? <sighs> like this is not about profits for Big Pharma. This is about people's lives. I do not want to go back to a time where people are dying from preventable diseases. And Russell Brand's idea of, you know, eat healthy, get exercise, stop smoking, doesn't really apply to little Timmy who's only three years old. If you truly believe that there is no link between vaccines and autism, aren't you going to be the key primary and sovereign beneficiary of these studies? Wouldn't they, as that meme shows, aren't those studies going to entirely exonerate you? But the studies would exonerate you, right? Right? Well, here's the thing. The studies already exist. The point of doing more studies on this thing is just so that anti-vaxxers can find that one study that they can point to. Because here's the thing. Russell Brand has actually been leaving something out. So the person who RFK Jr. is getting to run the CDC study into vaccines and autism is someone called David Geyer, someone who doesn't have a medical degree and also got fined for practicing medicine without a license. Now, of course, David is a huge proponent of the idea that vaccines cause autism because who else is RFK Jr. gonna get for this? Clearly, he's not looking for someone who's qualified. But here's the interesting thing about David and his father, especially when you consider the Trump administration's stance on certain drugs given to children. 
David and his father think they've managed to come up with a treatment for autism consisting of Lupron. You know, the puberty blocker. Now, not only does their treatment use Lupron, it uses 10 times the daily dose used to treat precocious puberty or gender dysphoria. So the Trump administration has essentially hired a quack to look into vaccines and autism who wants to give far too high of a dose of puberty blockers to autistic children. You can't make this up. The fact that the guy who is running this is a quack who promotes pseudoscience quite frankly puts the whole validity of the study into question. They clearly have a bias, they have pseudoscientific beliefs, and they're a fraud. When you put those together, you are likely to end up with a study that has a completely incorrect conclusion. Yes, studies all over the world say it does not. What do you think? Senator, if you show me those studies, I will absolutely, as I promised to Chairman Cassidy, I will I, apologize. That is a very troubling response. I've watched this guy and a dude called Aaron Siri go through those studies and literally point out, see that study, look, look at the question that they're asking. It's a bit like the organic fruit versus pesticide fruit question, uh, example that we gave you at the top of this item. Well, the Danish study, and sorry to keep coming back to one of the best studies done on this, was looking at the same question that Andrew Wakefield was. Is there a link between the MMR vaccine and autism? And Andrew Wakefield, if you're unaware, is pretty much the person who brought the idea of vaccines causing autism into the mainstream. If it weren't for Andrew Wakefield and his, let's be honest, fraudulent study, we wouldn't even be asking this question. If you are a vaccine manufacturer, you want that study! Well, no, they want their studies run by people with competence, not quacks. But who knows, maybe Lupron manufacturers are secretly really excited for this because it might open up a new market for them. How do we do that? Well, why don't we just lie and say those things are safe and then at least we can conduct the trials probably a little more easily and bias the trials. And there are so many ways of biasing the outcomes of a clinical experiment or reporting on a news story. It all depends on what the outcome you want is. If the outcome you want is no link between autism and vaccines. You can do that all day long. And don't you think that might apply to people who are biased against vaccines? Like, you know, RFK Jr. Like the person running the study. I mean, it's not completely inconceivable that a vaccine skeptic would be able to publish a paper that shows that we're right all along while having many, many errors in it. It has happened before. See Andrew Wakefield. The fact of the matter is that oftentimes conspiracy theorists tend to be more fraudulent than the people that they claim are frauds. The facts don't agree with them, so they have to make up facts because otherwise they have nothing. And quite often they actually profit from conspiracy theories because as it turns out, there is quite a market for that, especially in recent years. Because otherwise people will find new ways of forming alliances and opposing that corruption, particularly now with the miracle of modern communication, that we can do it completely outside of centralised institutions. And as you know, airports are places full of Wi-Fi and all sorts of evil energies. Think of all the phones out there. I'm sorry, I just had to put that in when he mentioned the miracle of modern communication. Never mind the fact that in the past years talked about the evils of Wi-Fi and phones. But I think that's where I'll leave it for today. So leave a like and subscribe if you like that video. Leave a comment letting me know what you think and what you'd like to see me do for future videos. If you like what I do, you could also support me on Patreon, just like Huge R's, MC Nutkin, Rashina Keller, Ray, Kid Vicious, definitely not NASA, Maury, Kaylee, and Fizzwizzard. There should be a link there, or you could buy me a coffee. I will see you in the next video between you and me. Thank you for watching.